Well, and sticking with a theme of developmental programs and low-budget operations, um, so AEW is now doing house shows, and as we have learned, they did one, what was this, last night as we're speaking right now? It is. It was last night. It was, it was 12th, last night, May 12th. In my mother's birthplace, Corbin, Kentucky, at the big new building they've got down there. And I don't know, honestly, how Corbin got this building. It must have been some kind of political thing or somebody, they had money left over in the budget for the county or I, I don't know what the fuck happened. But there's a, an arena in Corbin, Kentucky that seats 5,000 people. And for the benefit of those of you non-United States residents who've never heard of Corbin, Kentucky, and for the benefit of the 98.5 or 9% of American residents who've never been to Corbin, Kentucky, the population of Corbin in my road atlas, that is, I guess this would be the 2010 census, because my atlas is almost 15 years old. The population of Corbin is 7,900 people, Brian. But they've got, they're on the interstate. They're right on I-75. But I'm, and I'm not downgrading the people of Corbin. It is my mother's, actually, she wasn't even born in Corbin. That was the nearest town. She was born, I think, about 20 miles due west in Duck Run, Kentucky. But that wasn't like really an official place. And of course, that was 90 years ago this October, so it, now Corbin is a teeming metropolis. But most people have only heard of it because that was the first Colonel Sanders restaurant. Otherwise, I don't know how Corbin got a 5,000-seat building. But anyway, AEW ran it, and they're running house shows. But my question to you before we went on the air and what we're going to talk about here is, are they running developmental shows or are they trying to run house shows and if the and i believe they should run developmental shows i think a lot of their younger talent does need work in front of you know an audience and repetition like that so i think they should run developmental shows or you know since their their crowds their devoted fan base you know, enjoys spending money on AEW. I don't blame them if they didn't run some bigger events, house shows in bigger cities, That even if they're not doing television, because they'd probably sell some tickets. So you're not but, against either concept, house shows I'm, or developmental shows? I'm not against either concept, but I'm wondering, are they trying to do both at the same time? That's when I see the card and I see the buildings, it doesn't all add up, much less the places. I mean. Corbin, I think the WWE actually ran that building in Corbin a while back. And they I'm sure they sold out. It's like the Rolling Stones coming to town for fuck's sake in Corbin. But are they how can you run a 5,000 seat building in a town that only has 8,000 people in it and not put any of your biggest stars on the card except for FTR and a couple of people that I think were on the card to lead other people. So uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it, but the, uh, we got an email uh, from somebody that was there, uh, Ryan from Taswell, Tennessee. I've been to Taswell that I went to a spot show there at the 1978 WFIA convention in Knoxville. And we've also seen pictures of the crowd on Twitter and we've also got the seating map uh, from the ticketing people. Was that Ticketmaster or what ticket agency was that? Oh, I am not certain, actually. <clears throat> but it was it was a, tick, a seating map that they put out. And the point is that nobody agrees on exactly how many people were there. The pictures looked like five, six hundred. The eyewitness testimony from Ryan and Taswell, which we'll get to in a second, says, well, maybe 1,000, 1,200. The ticketing service said there were 1,800 tickets distributed, but that's not paid attendance. That's how many were out. 
And I have a feeling to, to someone who doesn't ahead. understand the difference there. What does that mean? That when means you say that that's any, how many are out. Any comp tickets that you gave out for advertising or for sponsors or for to try to get people in the building. Um, that doesn't that's tickets distributed is not tickets paid for. But we know from not only pictures, but from an eyewitness account that even if there were 1,800 tickets distributed, there weren't that many people in the building. And if you have, if you're giving away tickets, a lot of times that's because people are not motivated to see your show to begin with. Unless you're doing legitimate trades for advertising, whatever. But if you've given away hundreds of tickets to a show that draws a thousand people, you were trying to get people in the building. How many tickets would you normally set aside for something like local radio to promote the event? Well, again, here in New York City, if you'd even get anybody to talk to you, you'd have to go in and say, look, I'll give you 200 tickets this show at the Garden. Give me, you know, 10 spots at $5,000 each or whatever the fuck. But this is Corbin, Kentucky. There's a couple of radio stations for... 12 tickets, six pairs. They do on-air giveaways all day long. There's a, 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 a low-power television station, or at least there used to be because OVW was on it, Channel 9 down in London, Kentucky, which is about 30 miles up the road. And that guy for four tickets for him and his family and say, come down, bring your camera and shoot some interviews, he'll play shit all day long. It, it it there, it, Corbin is a town you could legitimately get a hundred posters, a thousand flyers, go to the gas stations and the fast food places on the interstate, and fucking have some radio spots. And within two or three days, everybody in town is going to know that there's a wrestling match at the fucking arena. Whether they're going to want to go is different, but they're going to know about it. So there's no way that hundreds of tickets were given out for advertising. And you know where you know where Corbin is, don't you? I'll tell you now why you know where Corbin is. Do you know what's 25 miles to the southeast of Corbin, Kentucky? I don't. Barberville. Oh boy. Oh. You've been there. I have twice. Okay. Barberville is half the size of Corbin. Barberville, the population is 4,000 people, and Corbin, it's 8,000. And you've been to Barberville. So how hard would it be to get out the word that national television wrestling is coming to this town? No, the word got out that a bus of Yankees was leaving town and the entire town lined the streets to watch us and the wrestlers leave town. Word got around quick. Yeah. Real quick. It's like a kid on a bicycle can pretty much spread the fucking news. And that's, again, Smoky Mountain Wrestling ran Barberville, Kentucky at the Knox Central High School once a month regularly. Our sponsor, uh, the Dennis Chestnut, who was uh, on, uh, he was the town gadabout, and he, on behalf of the Knox Central Booster Club that raised money for the high school athletic teams and et cetera, and we would do once a month between 500 and eight or 900 for the bigger events. We had the Steiners there, and then we did about 1,000 people. Between 500 and 1,000 people once a month, 25 miles from Corbin. But you know what our expense was? You know why? Knox Central High School had a fucking gym that seated 2,000 people. And we got it for free because they were the sponsors. We gave them their percentage of the gate. For 25% of whatever we drew, we got the building for free. We got the ticket, the advanced ticket locations. We got all the local advertising. We got the staff of the building to do whatever the fuck. That was all included. So we had no risk. If we drew $1,000, we got the whole thing for 250 bucks. And in London, Kentucky, OVW ran quite regularly their developmental shows. But instead of a 5,000-seat arena, we would draw four or 500 people. In, uh, right up the road from Corbin in London is there, I can't remember what the name of the building is, but they have like an... It's kind of a convention center thing, but it's an exhibition hall building. It's not an arena, but they have, you know, lower scale comic conventions and, you know, local events there. 
and you put a ring and you put the chairs in, and I guarantee goddamn to you that you could rent the fucking thing if they just wanted to come in and, and rent the thing and do everything themselves. They could rent it for less than $1,000. It's London, Kentucky. But we again, we had a sponsor where we didn't even rent the building to begin with. And we drew <laughs> approximately the same number of people that I saw in the pictures of the AEW show and half as many as what this eyewitness testimony says they had there. No plane tickets, no guaranteed money up front. Because it, it, you can't expect to fly people. And let me give you the card. Can I give them the card? Are you, are are you, you there? Are you asking yes. me? Yes, I'm asking you. Let me give the people the card for the house show oh, the in car. Portland, Kentucky, the I heard AEW car. ramp. I heard no, you the can't car. Have people fly there. Let me give them the car. Let me give them the no. car. That's why I didn't know what the hell you were talking about. No, no, no. Let me give them the card. An FTW title match, Hook versus Ethan Page. The Boys without Dalton Castle versus Christopher Daniels and Sean Spears. Tony Storm versus Billy Starks. Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy versus Lee Moriarty and Big Bill. Powerhouse Hobbs versus Pat Buck. Claudio Castagnoli versus Brian Pillman Jr. And for the AEW tag team title, FTR versus the Gun Boys. So let me let me go down and explain this card. Hook and Ethan Page, I don't know. Apparently they think Ethan Page might be a leader, but there's no leader there. Christopher Daniels is probably there because he's involved in the office and I don't know why they put him against the boys because I would have thought that maybe you'd had, well, they put Hobbs in that position with Pat Buck, but Christopher Daniels against anybody in a single match probably been more productive. Tony Storm against Billy Starks. Billy Starks is a teenage kid here in Louisville, so at least she drove. But again, here's the problem. I have Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy versus Lee Moriarty and Big Bill. What? Nobody's going to learn anything here. Is Darby going to learn anything from Lee Moriarty and Big Bill? Are Big Bill and Lee Moriarty going to really learn from Darby? He's still green. And they're in there with the, the mascot. Hobbs versus Pat Buck can be explained because Pat Buck is doing some on-the-job training for powerhouse Hobbs. I hope that match went 10 or 12 minutes and Hobbs learned how to work on the fly and they called nothing ahead of time before they got in the ring. And, you know, and then Claudio, same thing with Brian Pillman Jr. But they have one somewhat legitimate match, FTR and guns. So, yes, I agree. All these talents and so many more are green and need small shows in front of an audience to get experience. But why put this card in a 5,000-seat building when you could have had the same card and the same crowd in two different places, 15 miles, 20 miles on either side of this town and spent probably a quarter or a fifth or less of the money. There was no chance that the, the building with seats 5,000 was set up for 3,500 and there was no chance that was going to happen. But then again, now I see that they're, they're now going to be running more house shows. But in, in places like Tupelo and Huntsville, Alabama, but are they going to, again, be just developmental shows with none of the stars, in which case, why are they really advertising it nationally and going to these bigger buildings, even in smaller towns? Or are they? was this just practice and they're actually going to put real cards in some of these towns in these bigger buildings because you don't, you know what you learn when you're in a 5,000 seat building and you're green and you're working in front of 800 people, you learn how to be fucking nervous and goddamn depressed because it's not a great atmosphere.
Brian, any so, questions before I talk about some of the firsthand comments from Ryan and Taswell? So your biggest issue isn't necessarily the overall card. It's that it's this card and this building. What are they doing? They're not. This is neither fish nor fowl. If you had somebody go out and say, I'm going to book sponsored spot shows in high school gyms in the Southeast or the Midwest or wherever. Southeast is easier because it's got a long tradition of doing wrestling shows that way. And then you get these guys and girls out in front of five or six or 800 people or maybe a thousand people if you get a good little sponsor group locally in a less lower pressure environment and you're not spending a fortune to give these guys experience on a wrestling show. It doesn't need to be that way. Or if you want to book 5,000 seat buildings, put them in markets that you can put a fucking card in and sell the tickets and look like a fucking successful company. But then that requires you to work all your big, highly paid names instead of all the green guys that need work, but not in 5,000 seat buildings with crowds that look like a piss hole in a snowbank. And this had to bleed money. Just plane tickets alone. What, did they fly to Louisville? Did they fly to Knoxville? Because there's no airport within... I mean, now, I know some mail planes and crop dusters may be able to land closer, but there's no airport within 75 miles either direction of Corbin. They're running Salem, Virginia tonight. How Jesus far Christ! How far <laughs> is that from Corbin? Well, it depends on whether they decide to rib any of the green guys like we did Candido and Tammy and tell them to make sure they went the short way. <laughs> hold on here. Let me look at that. And, uh, and just so you know, the house show tonight, Salem, Virginia, at the Salem Civic Center, the setup is for 3,698 people. Well, they ain't going to have to worry about turning any away. There are 2,076 tickets distributed. And they, they still, they ain't going to have to worry about all them showing up. I, if I was the concession stand, I wouldn't fucking stock in too much popcorn. So Salem is right next to Roanoke, which, so basically what they're going to have to do, they'll get on the interstate and stay there. They better stay, take the interstate, but they will have to, they'll have to go from Corbin down to Knoxville and then cut up. And that's, that's 220 miles. No, that's to Stanton. 140, 100, that's 300 mile drive for them. I mean, it's interstate, so that's nothing out of the ordinary, but God damn, that's, that's like routing Pixley to Bug Tussle. Where did, they, if you said, I'm running a multi-million dollar company, I can run wrestling shows anywhere in the country. I'm going to pick Corbin and Salem. Well, again, they brought in Jeff Jarrett. They said they were going to try to build up the house show program. Let me ask you this to try to look on the bright side of all this. If you are one of the younger wrestlers, and it's weird to expect people to pay to go see really a one-match show, because although the guns are young and they could use this experience as much as anyone, they're the former tag team champions. It's a rematch of the yeah. tag titles, but it's a one-match show. And I'm sure FTR tore it down because they worked a ton of house shows for WWE and NXT. They know what to do. Yeah. But for the younger wrestlers who work on that show, again, Pat Buck, Christopher Daniels, both agents in the company, if they are driving the next day to Salem, Virginia, is this, in a sense, what you would almost want? The idea that you could have some of these wrestlers working in front of a non-televised crowd, maybe the room's too big for you, but a non-televised crowd, and they could talk about what they're doing on the road on the way to the next match. <laughs> You'd have to put... One mind in each car, elsewise it's a blind leading the blind. But no, I'm not, again, I'm not crying for them because they have to spend six hours to car or whatever, but it's just that from a promoter standpoint, this was never designed to make any money whatsoever. And I know people say, well, Tony's got plenty of money to spend, but why not, why not make it more palatable and, and at least break even or not spend thousands of dollars to run a show on purpose? This was, was, could never have possibly, nobody could have believed this would ever make the money back. All right, anyway, here's a couple of notes from it. Um, Ryan how, much said he, th how much do you think it would cost to rent the house there in Corbin, Kentucky? Geez, well, I mean, it's a 5,000-seat building, but it's also Corbin. 
But I mean, I, I would think still rent and just staffing for anything, we're talking about a few thousand dollars. As, as opposed to a high school gym that would have fit the crowd just fine for potentially nothing or for a cut of whatever. Um, but you could see a major promotion not wanting to run high school gyms, right? Why? It's beautiful. This is Kentucky. <laughs> Fucking basketball. It's, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I've been in arenas that are not as nice as many of the high school gyms around Kentucky and Southern Indiana. Of course, there are some stinkers too, but if you get a good one, and everybody knows where it is, and they don't have to pay to park. Anyway, here are a few of Ryan's comments. He had previously been there to a concert. That night, there were police and attendants directing parking. Tonight, parking was no problem. I realized as we made our way inside, we didn't have to worry about being crowded. Uh, instead of the close to 5,000 capacity seats blocked for the entranceway, probably around 3,500 available, the attendance was probably close to 1,000 or 1,200. As I said, I saw pictures less than that. 1,800 were distributed. There's, there's no way there were 1,800 people in that building. And that's distributed tickets. They probably panicked when they heard the late advance. Anyway, I already gave you the card. Observations. Except for the main event, the matches spent a few minutes on the floor. They should have some type of lighted platform so everyone could see the action as it unfolds, like a ring. They still can't stay in the ring. And here, here's another thing that I especially used to go out of my mind with Ring of Honor guys and with the, just the indies in general. In an arena... It's one thing when you have an arena set up and the stands and people are looking down on the ring except for the, the floor seats, right? There's a little bit better line of sight. But in all the indie shows, the Ring of Honor guys used to do this. It's an indie mindset. They have to fight outside on the floor. The problem is they're running flat buildings. And uh, anybody that's ever been to an indie wrestling show where they're running a flat building with seats on the floor, they go outside, they're at, at ringside fighting and just killing each other for five minutes, but the guy in row 12 on the other side of the ring can't see Dick. And he's standing on his chair, and he's like, well, I hear the stuff rattling around. It, it, and so they solve that problem by going around on all four sides of the ring. So then three sides of the ring can't fucking see shit for most of the time, and... It, it's just, you don't need it. It's fucking stupid. Um, Tony Khan came out at the close of intermission and ringside broke into a Tony chant. You could tell he was eating it up. He announced this was his first time in Corbin, Kentucky and thanked everyone for coming. I'm it was surprised. also, coincidentally enough, his last time in Corbin, Kentucky. Well, I'm surprised a man of the world like that has never been through Corbin. Um, Hobbs is a huge man working with Pat Buck tonight was a smart call to get some on the job training is Ryan's comment. Uh, FTR were the most over followed by Darby. Even children were chanting FTR. They cut a promo to close the show, telling us how much they love wrestling and want there to be a place where fans can see that we'd love to be for there to be a place where we could see FTR. Eh, blah, 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 blah. Advertisement had Britt Baker front and center. No Brit. Event staff began sweeping and cleaning during the main event. Well, that always <laughs> happens during a hot main event in a big crowd. It was an angle. They work for Kenny Omega. He's the cleaner. Ah, that, well, they could have used him apparently because they wanted to get a head start. So, and let, let, let me say one other thing. We'll move along is the ticket prices. I understand for this show started at 20 bucks, general admission, $20. That's great for Corbin because our tickets uh, were, $10 30 years ago in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. It's that same thing as $20 now. $20 general admission for all these kind of shows. Get people in the door. That's what I tried to tell Greg the Office Boy in Ring of Honor. Remember when he set $65 ringside for Charleston, West Virginia? That's most people's fucking monthly rent. But you brought up they were going to try to expand the house shows, and they brought Jeff Jarrett to try to potentially expand. He's done a ton of promotion and knows a lot of buildings, but when you book a building, you don't have the card. I'm wondering, did they tell him, hey, we're going to do developmental shows? Or did he say, hey, 
You want to do house shows? Well, here, if we go to Tupelo, if we go to Huntsville, if we even to Corbin, with our TV and our stars, we can draw 2,500, 3,000 people in these markets, small buildings. That might be a fucking profit maker. But then, so, but then I see that tickets in some of these other towns are starting way ahead of that price. Does that mean they're going to beef up the cards? Or The point is, they need to decide what they want to do with this. If they want to have guys get experience in front of people, they should do low-cost shows in smaller buildings where they get a sweetheart deal and in small markets where people will be more inclined to watch and like and react to live wrestling and they're not jaded and jaded and confused or whatever. If they want to run house shows where they actually make a business out of it and draw enough people to make a profit on the event or sell a lot of merchandise, then they've got to give the people the stars that they see on television. If you were in Huntsville, Alabama, would you pay $40 to see that card I just rattled off or more? Or, you know, that's a... $20 that's a, is fair. Twenty. It's a $20 general admission. Hey, everybody come in and see what we've got to offer here. We want people in the place. Instead of going out and giving the tickets away for free because you didn't make the card attractive and you priced the floor seats too high or whatever. I don't know. But they got to decide which genre they're going to do this. I'm not saying they're not selling tickets for their TV tapings, and we know they're selling tickets at Wimley, but you can't sell tickets for Powerhouse Hobbs versus Pat Buck, even though that's probably the best thing for Powerhouse Hobbs to be doing these days is working with Pat Buck. That's my point. Well, for instance, Jim, tonight, as we are recording Salem, Virginia, Salem Civic Center, tickets range from $20 to $80. Jesus! All ringside is gone. Uh, why should, why, when I say all ringside, the first five rows or four rows around the ring are gone. There's, okay, a, few no, floor, there's normally, a few floor seats. Oh, go ahead. No, normally, uh, there's 20 seats in a ringside row unless you're just trying to jam them in on the floor or do a big setup. 20 seats per row, eight, er, for, per row per side, so 80 seats per row. So there's 400 people on the floor. That's great, but at eighty dollars, are they going to be happy when they see that their semifinal is fucking you know, dipshit Jones versus Bug Tussle McGee? I think they will. I you know what? I, <laughs> no, I mean, again, they're not selling out. This isn't Wembley we're talking about. These are just spot shows. Seemingly, I mean, that's the way they're treating them. House shows, spot shows, whatever you want to say. They're really more like spot shows. I mean. I forgot what the question was. Well, the, the question was, when do they price it to the point where the people that bought a ticket for an AEW house show oh, for that's... $80 plus gas plus parking plus a friend to go with them plus fucking popcorn? If you go into it knowing that you're not going to get the Young Bucks Omega, Moxley worked that other house show, but obviously not here. You're not going to get you know, more than likely a CM Punk or an MJF. Well, we can't even get CM Punk on TV, but but did they know that when they put the tickets on sale? Did they announce the card when they put the tickets on sale? Or did the initial rush go, oh shit, AEW's coming? And then they got the tickets, and then they said, oh, the only part of AEW is coming. If these are the cards they're doing and these are the towns they're running, like you said, there's a future show in Tupelo, there's Huntsville, Alabama, there's Salem, Virginia tonight. Is it worth giving any TV time at all to maybe a little bit more of a mention or a conversation that, hey, this person's coming to this town, have them say something? Or is it not worth it? Well, it's always worth it to promote something you're doing, but you're designing something that's almost unpromotable. Because, for example, when, when Dusty, for example, would promote a match on TBS that was taking place in a specific town that wasn't going to be presented anywhere else, normally... You know, like the best of seven series, you knew it was happening, but they didn't want to try to call attention to it was going to be the Road Warriors versus the Midnight Express in every town that week, right? So we would talk generically, but we'd mention a town if if if, if there was something that was only going to happen there, and it was the, something that would appeal to the people in that town, and it gave us something else to talk about on television, whether it be the Mulkies in Anderson, South Carolina, their hometown that sold out and turned them away or misty blue in Baltimore. Cause dusty was tickled by it or whatever. 
but you can't. You what is powerhouse Hobbs going to say? Boy, when I get a hold of Pat Buck in Salem, you know you can say we're all coming, we're coming, we're coming. Then a lot of people ain't coming. Sort of like fucking Uncle Dave's sex life. So you know you want to do the on tour and mention the dates. It's part of the company. But past, like you said, FTR and the guns in a rematch, there was nothing to promote or talk about. It was just names uh, wrestling each other. Well, for the record, here's who's on the house show tonight. We'll finish up the house show conversation with this. House Rules Tour, Salem, Virginia, May 13th, 7 p.m. bell time. Matches announced. Darby Allen and Orange Cassidy <laughs> versus Powerhouse Hobbs and QT Marshall. Tony Storm versus Sky Blue. Wardlow, with Arn Anderson at least in his photo, versus Lee Moriarty. And finally, Big Bill versus Virginia's own Hangman Page. And that's it? That's all that's been announced so far. Jeff Jarrett's uh, images in the post. Well, Moxley, Jarrett, Claudio, Britt, Hook. Or in the poster, none of them. Well, a lot of those people were in Corbin, but uh, some of those people were not in Corbin that's on that. I can understand Paige, he lives up there. But uh, did they, are they keeping people on the road and just flying them around or taking them around to, I don't know. All right. Anyway, we'll, we'll monitor this house show situation and see if they ever decide exactly what they're going for here with these things. You think they're going to come to Louisville? I don't care. <laughs> I, it, Is there I, a building they could run for a house show like this? Yes. Um, well, number one, there's a place right down south of town. It's a little convention center, the Paraquat Springs Convention Center. And I promoted a TNA house show there uh, in what was it, 2000, probably eight, maybe maybe early nine, because we w they came to the gardens, TNA did, I promoted that, that was their, in 2007, I'm pretty sure it was, that was their biggest house show to that point in time, they ran the gardens, but th that was when the gardens was taking events, but you had to staff it, you had to put the toilet paper in the bathroom, everything. So the next time they came back, we went to this convention center, again, had an independent show, did about a thousand people, It'd be perfect for something like that. Obviously, you know, in, in Louisville, they wouldn't want to, unless they were going to do television, they wouldn't want to go to any of the big buildings. You can't get into the gardens, but there's still a few places on the periphery. There's a new place in the West End that Dave Marquez is doing Derby City Wrestling now that uh, is an offshoot of his championship wrestling from Hollywood program. And they taped there, they just taped, I think, last month once. But, you know, you're looking for, Louisville wouldn't be the best market because OVW's been here. And if anybody's seen the OVW lately, Jesus Christ, you wouldn't want to see any more wrestling. But it's not anything new. And it's also, it's a bigger city that you would have to spend money to advertise unless you had regular ongoing television. They want to hit the smaller markets if they're going to do developmental shows where you can get the word out, get advertising easier and less expensively, and, you know, get people that are more accessible, more accepting of wrestling because they don't see it all the time. That's why I thought they were out of their minds when they put Florida Championship Wrestling in Florida because the last thing people in Florida needed was more fucking either bad wrestling, outlaw wrestling, indie wrestling, or even free wrestling. TNA at Universal Studios had free wrestling them to death. So it, 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 it depends on where you're going and what you're trying to accomplish. Well, What are we trying to accomplish? I don't know. This is your show. <laughs>